So we have our first roadmap here. This this roadmap is specifically about what makes up the the specifications that we need for the core WebAssembly specifications. So this is like how to build core WebAssembly modules. This is that first row. The second row is our roadmap for components and how those align with some of the things that are happening within the core specification. And components build directly on top of the core spec. Components are the thing that gives you the WIT interface. WIT is standardized as part of the component model. We have WIT because we need WebAssembly interface types. That's the key difference is that we're able to now talk in high level types with components and make them composable and virtualizable. And so that's the second column. The third column here, or th uh, second row. The third row here is WASI. And WASI builds on top of the component model and on top of core WASM specification. And so what we're talking about here are the things that we want to get done now, things that are actively being worked on, the things we're going to do immediately next, and then things that we're going to get done later this year. We also have a column here for things that we know that are not in scope to be done this year. So let's start from the top left. Core WASM threads are actively being worked on by Conrad Watt and, uh, Watt and Andreas Rosberg. They also wrote a really great paper that I recommend checking out called Winkening WebAssembly. And that really talks through a lot that's going into that prototype and the specification proposal that they're working on now. Ivan Thomasberg, I think. Uh, uh, don't quote me on that. Uh, Ivan, working from VMware, uh, has been working really hard on WebAssembly garbage collection, uh, and he's partnered up with Nick Fitzgerald to get that through. Um, and so that's an implementation inside the WASM tools space. So all of the tooling that uh, WASM time and a lot of others build on top of, that's largely where he's been working is within WASM tools. The next thing that he's going to be working on is getting that implementation working within WASM time. The chunk of the work is within the WASM tools project. What's really cool and what I want to highlight about the work that Conrad's been pushing through is that once we have core WASM threads shipping and, and implemented in places like WASM time, components just get that support. It's just built in. Uh, and I think that's huge. Um, so we don't have to actually make any changes inside the component model specification to support core WASM threads so long as the core WebAssembly specification supports it. So differently, uh, a, a component fully encapsulates a core WASM module. It, all of its memory, all of its globals, if it creates some th spawns threads and how it manages th threads, that's all encapsulated inside one component. And what that also means is that other components uh, don't need to know what threads are being scheduled where on other components that they're uh, statically linked to. Um, so it's out of scope for components to be distributed um, to handle like massive concurrency models or anything like that. Um, so it, that's all encapsulated in, in one component. But as a cool effect of, hey, uh, once we get that landed, um, it just works for components. Now, moving down to things that we have to do for the component model specification. Uh, we've already landed this, the component naming and versioning. Uh, I don't think it'll change, but I put it here because I think, you know, if there's anything that's going to wiggle, it might be a little bit there uh, on the syntax for this. Uh, we, we just landed it about a week ago, so uh, maybe it's two weeks at this point. But basically, um, it's got a, a namespace, package name, and then also an optional version. And that's really handy because we, we want that for being able to have our interfaces be modular and let them version independent of each other. And getting that in early before we cut preview two is going to be really important so that we can grow certain interfaces that need to be fixed without having to update the entire monolith. The other thing that's actively being worked on is resource and handle types by Alex Crichton. So uh, this is the last like major feature that we need to add to the component model. We don't know yet if this is purely additive and that we won't break existing uh, implementations if, say, an interface doesn't have resources or handles. Um, maybe it doesn't have to be updated, or in even that component doesn't have to be updated uh, if it's already been compiled. But I, I think that's something that we'll find out once we land this. And so there's already a draft PR doing a massive amount of chunk uh, of this work by Alex. So I would estimate this is somewhere around 50% complete. Uh, and so we'll have it done 
uh, nowish and, and not even uh, necessarily nextish. Uh, and so once we have that, we have everything we need to define what is in the component model preview two. Um, we haven't started work on adding garbage collection components. We really need WASM garbage collection to move forward within WASM time and WASM tools and all the tooling that we use to prove out a lot of these reference implementations. So that if folks are excited about that, that would be a really cool one that nobody's currently working on, but uh, would be really beneficial to have folks work on. Things that are not in this year that we already know is going to be out of scope is having native async, and that's with futures and streams. And that is what we're basically calling preview three for the component model. Uh, that's really important to have because we want to be able to have uh, components should be composable and virtualizable, which means I should be able to continuously add in components uh, and link them together and be able to build on top of each other. But without components knowing the async behaviors of the interfaces that they're working with, um, there's not a really good way to manage that unless components understand that natively. Uh, and I'm not saying that there's not going to be a preview for, but I think once we stabilize on that, on native async, we will have all the features that we want for the component model, and that is what would make up component model 1.0. So once we have a level of stability, uh, that could happen. Uh, so that we don't expect that to happen this year. So with WASI, uh, there are a lot of things that we needed to move forward uh, that we, people were building on in WASI Preview 1. So a lot of these will look familiar, but maybe some of these are new, like WASI sockets. Uh, another new API is WASI HTTP. And all of these interfaces I would describe as making up the fundamentals of what we need in WASI. And the reason to have WebAssembly's standardized interfaces is that these are things that other components need to know and be able to talk about and reason about so that we have portability across runtimes. Now, it doesn't mean that I can't make interfaces that, that work with these, but uh, these are going to be some of those just common interface types that everybody's going to want to build on. And so this set is the set that is going to make up WASI Preview 2, and that's going to be the stake in the ground that we place. Uh, once we've cut the WASI Preview 2 draft, we're planning on that being basically in the fall timeframe, uh, we want to make sure that we've got a solid JavaScript host implementation and a solid uh, WASM time host implementation. So basically a server-side implementation and a web implementation. And, and that will give us a lot of feedback on how solid is this uh, these interfaces and, and this draft. Um, Having one specification or one implementation is not enough. Uh, we know we need to work really hard on it, improving and writing docs and uh, evolving test suites so that other runtimes can easily uh, validate their support of some of these interfaces. Once we feel solid about the stability here on, on all of the blocks, that is what makes up WASI Preview 2. And WASI Preview 3 will be based on the ability to talk natively uh, async with features and streams. And that is what we're thinking would be the road to WASI 1.0. Now I have a, a second roadmap here. Uh, and all of these things are, are just as important, but less based on specifications and more about, um, well, this one is also standardized interfaces. I guess the way I would describe it is things that aren't blocking for reaching uh, component model 1.0 and WASI 1.0. And, and part of that is language tooling. So I want to be able to have a lot of different uh, languages compile guest languages that compile to WebAssembly components. And so we've already seen several of these grow and, and be contributed from the community. Uh, Peter Hewn works on Cargo Component, and I would say that's like our first uh, uh, major tooling project that's gone the, the furthest, and it's already started adding uh, registry support. And so what we have here in this later box, what, we, what we're saying here is basically right now, today, Cargo Component uh, compiles for WASI Preview 1, and then it uses an adapter to adapt it to the component model specification. And once uh, WASI Preview 2 is cut and available, we would love for Cargo Component to target uh, the WASI Preview 2 tuple directly uh, instead of uh, doing this adaption step. 
Um, we also have TinyGo language bindings, but we don't yet have a componentized style tool like we do for our componentized Py and componentized JS. JCo is a tool that wraps wraps componentized JS and um, other ecosystem tools very similar to how Cargo Component works in that this is something that's designed to feel native to that language ecosystem. And JCo hasn't added it yet, but um, something that we expect to happen soon, like Cargo Component has already added registry support, we expect JCo to start adding registry support. So we kind of expect each one of these different language ecosystems to start adding their own um, kind of tooling around adding registries and other things that, that make it easier to build, test, and run components in that language ecosystem. So I mentioned it a few times, our registry. So we've been iterating on the design, the prototype, OCI integration, and the specification for a registry. That's all been happening over the past several months. Uh, and very soon, what we're expecting to have is a Bycode Alliance dog food registry available uh, this year. And, and then also run through a security review of a lot of the things that we've designed. And so the last set that I put here is that we've got a number, I, I didn't list all of them, There's there are several, of different WASI proposals that have been made. Um, but one of the really cool and, and valuable things that we're getting out of the component model specification is that now interfaces don't have to be one giant monolithic ABI. I can now define interfaces with their own versions and have them be basically modular. So I can, I can move them independent through our ecosystem and uh, move them through different levels of uh, different phases of uh, adoption and standardization. And so all of these right now are in phase one. So they have a project repo. Uh, we have some people that maybe have been playing around and doing different implementations. I got to do a pretty fun demo of WASI key value and WASI messaging with Dan Chiarloni, who's one of the champions for a lot of these proposals. Uh, so we do have some implementations of these, but um, they are not necessarily blocking for what we need to cut the WASI preview two draft. That's not to say that they wouldn't be available around the exact same time, just that they're independent. Uh, and so all of those uh, APIs that are proposed are, are going to be part of a single world file that we call WASI Cloud. So that's the, the full definition of a lot of these interfaces that we think any cloud native component would want to use. Um, and then at some point, uh, we expect that to reach a level of stability with enough runtimes having implemented it um, that others will um, be able to expect us to stop repping it. <laughs> um, we're not there yet, but soon. And, and then there are other APIs like WASI Crypto, there's also WASI and then several others that I haven't listed here. Um, those are in that same bucket where we're iterating on them right now. Um, and I expect them to move through the proposal process. So basically, uh, that's our roadmap for this year. It's very exciting. I can kind of see the end in sight, which um, I hopefully have, have uh, described for everybody else to be able to kind of understand all the different work and how they're interrelated. The biggest call to actions that I have today is that uh, we don't yet have anybody working on WASM garbage collection and components, and that is a work item that somebody could get started on. Uh, but I would say our biggest gaps that other people contribute to is adding documentation and expanding our test suites for a lot of these things. And in a different way, what I'm saying is I'm making a call now for WASI Preview 2 implementers. Understand that there's a lot of churn happening. We've been iterating uh, fast and furiously, but um, I would really love it if folks are willing to take on uh, working through a lot of those rough edges with us uh, so that we can get WASI Preview 2 released and um, in the best shape that it could possibly be in this year. Thanks, Bailey, and thank you for listening to the WebAssembly Community Roadmap. I hope the way we've presented and shared the information via blog post and walkthrough helped you to understand where we're going and where we need help. You heard from Bailey, there are so many great ways to get involved. Specific projects, documentation, use cases, and more. If you'd like to get involved or attend a Bytecode Alliance meeting, head on over to GitHub slash Bytecode Alliance slash meetings. And here you'll find agendas, meeting notes, and participation details for many of our key work streams. All are welcome, and we look forward to your contributions. Have a great week.